So during the 2020 season, we've done a really great job of positioning ourselves again to get a very high draft pick in this next coming draft, okay? So now is about the time that we have to start thinking about who we might be taking in that draft, and we're scouting a lot of players. However, we're looking at the top of the draft for the guy that we want to be the next Louisville Badger, okay? So the two main guys that I have my eyes on right now are Anthony Edwards, shooting guard out of Georgia. He's a superior athlete, and he's drawing comparisons to guys like James Harden. And then the other guy on my radar is a guy named James Wiseman, okay, center out of Memphis, a guy with an amazing build at seven foot one, and a guy who's drawing comparisons to Anthony Davis. So either one of these guys would be home runs in my opinion. Welcome back everybody to episode 16 of the Louisville Badgers, and before we get into simulating up to the Lakers game that we'll be playing at home on February 19th, let's talk some trade deadline okay so first off we made a move several other teams made moves but we're going to start off with the trade that we made and it was with the indiana pacers and it was totally different than anything i put up in the community tab but the trade that we made was we unloaded jetty osman and a 2020 unprotected second round pick and we brought back jalen horde and a 2020 first round pick unprotected okay so we get a decent young piece that we can either trade or develop and we've got that first round draft pick that we coveted and looking at the trades that happened around the rest of the league the Suns traded Josh Jackson to the Spurs for Isaiah Thomas and a 2024 second round pick the Nets traded Daniel Gafford and a 2023 second round pick to the Thunder for Patrick Patterson and a 24 first round pick the Heat traded Deion Waiters and Kelly Olynyk to the Wolves for Dario Saric and Tyler Johnson. The Trailblazers traded Daniel House and Brandon Wright to San Antonio for Jakob Proto and Willie Reed. The Trailblazers also traded TJ Warren to the Clippers for Montrez Harrell. But take a look at this trade right here between Milwaukee and Sacramento, okay? This was a power move by the Milwaukee Bucks. They traded Dante DiVincenzo and a 2023 first round pick and a 2022 second round pick, both unprotected, to bring in shooting guard Buddy Heald. Okay, now this is obviously a win-now move, and it was actually pretty realistic in my opinion. Uh, maybe they gave up a little much, but I guess that's 2K. So now that we got all the trade stuff out of the way, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take a look at the lineup that I have set now. So a lot of you guys were calling for me to move to a 10-man rotation, and that's exactly what I did. So our ben bench depth only goes up to 10 guys now, and the way I have it set up after the trade is like this okay so we've got our young lineup as our starters now we've got Ja at point guard Bryn Forbes as our shooting guard for now Keldon Johnson he is now our starting small forward I wanted to make way for him to be the starting small forward I did have uh you know kind of a rotation between Karuch and uh and uh Osman and uh Baisley kind of in and out of there Keldon Johnson has uh proven a lot in real life and he's actually proven a lot in the game as well and I think that he is on his way to becoming a stud but we got to get him in game start developing him and whenever we do rotate him out of the starting lineup I do want to have him at least in the G League and then of course we got our guy Jaron Jackson as power forward and then our boy Zubots is now back from injury starting at center full time our six man off the bench still Monty Morris we did not actually trade him we were shopping him around of course uh, Brooke Lopez off the bench as well. He's been doing really, really well so far this season. Karuch as our eighth man off the bench. Avery Bradley as our ninth man off the bench. And then Myers Leonard will be our backup power forward. And I put Myers Leonard as the tenth man for the simple fact that uh, we need a backup power forward. Uh, a lot of these other guys I don't think really can play power forward. So, um, you know, Wagner can... Uh, but, you know, nobody else really can, can, can play power forward. And we needed a backup to Jaron Jackson, and we will keep Myers Leonard as that backup. All right? So, since we have guys like Jalen Horde and Darius Baisley now in our reserves, what I'm going to do, and I know Darius Baisley is not going to like this one bit, but we're going to send him to the G League. I want him 
to get some playing time. I wanted him to get some experience down there. Our new guy, Jalen Horde, we are also going to send to the G League, okay? So those guys will now get playing time down in the G League. Let me make sure. Um, he's got the tertiary color for his um, accessories, so let me change that. So now we got our lineup set. We got a couple of our young guys in the G League. And it is now time to move right on past this trade deadline, which has been a trying trade deadline to say the least. But like I said, I wanted to make sure I got you guys involved in making the decisions on the trades. Uh, there was a couple of those trades that I, you know, that I put up in the votes that I would have most certainly done myself, to be 100% honest. However, like I said, this series is always going to be about you guys. It's always going to be dedicated to you guys and to realism. Uh, you know, I will say this much about the realistic aspect of it, though. I do want to make this clear, okay? The realistic aspect of the series is going to be 100% based on all around the league how things go, right? So we are going to always make sure that, you know, coaches are up to date. We are always going to make sure that, you know, certain players in the offseason, uh, you know, especially the bigger names, aren't going to teams that they just simply wouldn't play for. Uh, but as far as our team goes, you know, down the line, I'm sure that there's going to be a trade here or there or a free agent signing here or there that might not be 100%, you know, what you guys consider realistic, right? But we've got to do what's best for our team in the long run as well. I do want to build through the draft, but I also want to try to bring in, you know, some talented guys who are, you know, maybe established in the league a little bit already. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that have been traded in the past to up-and-coming teams, expansion teams, and, you know, they may not have loved it right off the bat, but, you know, a lot of times it ends up working out in the long run. I mean, there was a point in time when the Warriors were not considered a great team to go play for, and now it's, like, mecca for, you know, free agents. So, um, you know, those things can change over time. So, but anyway, now that we got that out of the way, let's go on and simulate on through here. So we can get up to this Lakers game. We've only got two games between now and then. First is against the Mavericks, and we beat them. Nice. So our new lineup already serving us well. Morant with 14, no boards, five assists. Forbes with 13. This was just like an all-around effort here in this one. Keldon Johnson even came through pretty well. Porzingis with 25, nine rebounds, no assists, three steals, though. Next up, the first game against the Lakers, and that is in L.A. And we beat them by two. So look at this. We are on a three-game winning streak here. The Hornets, the Mavericks, and the Lakers. We're going to try to extend that by going back home to Louisville and playing the Lakers in our house. But look at that. Brooke Lopez was our leading scorer with 24 off the bench. Jaron Jackson with 17, 8, and 2. We had seven guys scoring in double digits, and that included uh, you know, a few of our bench guys. So really, really good game all around. And now that finally brings us to our home game on February 19th that we are going to play against the LA Lakers who are 36 and 23 right now I'm pretty sure that they're pretty high up there in the conference standings yep they're second behind the Houston Rockets in the conference standings they're three games behind them in the loss column one and a half games overall behind them so uh, here we go let's see how things go we are really really going to play our hearts out and see what we can do here their starting lineup looks like this Lonzo Ball starting at point guard, Josh Hart starting at shooting guard, LeBron James starting at small forward, Kyle Kuzma power forward, and DeMarcus Cousins will be starting for them at center. So this is definitely going to be uh, one heck of a tough team. Um, I feel like Jaron Jackson and John Morant will do good in their matchups, uh, but everywhere else we're going to have uh, you know a little bit of a struggle. So. Uh, you know, we're going to have to play a very, very good game, almost flawless game to get around a LeBron James team who is actually playing pretty well right now. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to 2K Sports and another exciting edition of NBA Basketball. Kevin Harlan here with Greg Anthony and a pair of Hall of Famers with us, Doris Burke and David Aldridge. So for the Lakers, their last game, a loss, that one was real close, too. They lost by just two points. That final score really caught a lot of people off guard. So here we are at tip-off against the Los Angeles Lakers in our own house at Amazon Arena. And the first thing you're going to notice is those awesome new City Edition jerseys. Now, I do want to let you guys know that I'm also working on a new Statement Edition jersey that we're going to have as well because most teams have an association, an icon, a statement edition and a city edition jersey that's what we're gonna have as well but these are the new and improved 
City Edition jerseys. I stuck with the tribute to the 101st Airborne Division. All I did was I, I changed up the jerseys a little bit and added in the camo because a lot of you guys thought that that would be a really cool idea. So I went ahead and did that. However, you guys will get to see plenty of these jerseys and the way they look throughout the game as we play through this one. But since I know it's what you guys prefer, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to myself here live early in the first quarter, already playing catch up to LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. You can't stop him, okay? So don't even try it. It's going to be all game. We're going to have to feed it to him all game. And okay, of course, LeBron reigns on my parade. Pick up the pace here. Pick up the pace. See if we can make some plays here. All right. Get it back to Ja. Got Danny Green. Bang. All right. That's what we needed. All right. Six-point game now. Let's play some defense. We don't want to get down too much too early here. And all right. Good. Finally, he misses a fadeaway. All right. We got to push the pace. We are best in transition. Forbes. Bang. That's what I'm talking about right there. Catch and shoot all day. That is what I'm talking about. All right, we got to make sure that we keep an eye on DeMarcus Co DeMarcus Cousins is what I was going to say. And then LeBron James does that. Okay, so uh, obviously we need to keep an eye on him. Or multiple eyes. Or many eyes. All right, Danny Green, LeBron James is right on your tail. Let's feed Jaron Jackson again. See what he can do. Kuzma, stop it. You cannot stop that, okay? Go watch some tape. Come back a better man. All right, now it's time to play the D, though. Time to play the D. Calls for a switch. And... Okay, good, he missed it. But, of course, the offensive rebound, but they miss it. All right, good, good. So we got lucky. We got lucky. Jaron Jackson again. And the green releases just keep coming. So I want to take a second here to admire this Brandon Ingram cyber face that was done by, I don't, I forget if it was Mr. Star or M. Nashow on the Modding Way uh, website, but with the hair and the face and the, the, the facial hair and the tattoos, it's all 100% on point. So I figured we'd admire that while he shoots his free throws here. And take a look at this. We got Mr. Doratio Harvey entering the game for the first time. Our hashtag ad player, who's got ridiculous hops, can jump to the moon and back with that 43-inch vertical. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I would like to see him, even though he's our opponent, I'd like to see him throw down maybe a, a, a cool dunk or something like that. So we'll keep an eye out for that. But first, we got to make something happen here. We can't worry about what their guys are doing. All right. Good screen. Got the mismatch here. Should be easy. And it is too easy. Patrick Beverly can't guard Jaron Jackson. Nine points already. All right, it's only a two-point game here. Harvey's got the ball now. He's going to pass it up. Oh, we almost got the steal there, but uh, Karuch couldn't. What just happened? Okay, so Doratio Harvey answered that call for a dunk a lot sooner than I thought he was going to, so uh, we got to respond with something good here. Let's pull up with Jaron Jackson, see what he can do, and bang. Catch and shoot, Jaron Jackson is on fire. All right, Harvey with the ball again. Up to Beverly. Uh, I'd much rather Beverly have the ball, honestly. <laughs> All right, and he's going to pull a three. Harvey clanks that one. Okay, good. Jaron Jackson with another rebound. Let's... Keep the tempo here. Uh, Avery Bradley. Whoa. And yes, Von Ley, that one is on you, my man. Avery Bradley with an amazing shot. Five-point game here late in the first. Let's keep it, keep it tight. Keep things close. Don't let him get too comfortable. That was supposed to go to Bradley. All right. Get it back to Morris. Nice screen. Oh, there we go. And... 
Oh, okay. That was supposed to be a layup. All right, transition again. This where, oh, that was a weird catch. We're going to pull it. A weird catch, but an amazing, amazing three-point shot from Bradley. He just does weird stuff like that all the time. But I am absolutely 100% all in on any weird stuff he wants to do, especially if the result is like that. All right, we got to guard Harvey tight here. Can't let him do... Oh, and the block. The block. All right, push the tempo. Push the tempo and Zubots. Bang, with the finish. Deratio Harvey, you're still a rookie, buddy. You're still a rookie. Okay, Avery Bradley's been doing this since you've been in diapers. All right, Harvey's got it again, though. Bradley's been doing a good... All right. I'm going to shut up now. All right. Come on, Ja. We need something from him. He's only got two points so far. Leonard almost lost it there. Forbes, he did not almost lose it. My God, he's been on fire early on here. Bryn Forbes, we've, we we got to make sure we get the ball in his hands because he is, uh, you know, he's feeling it right now. we got to play good D, though, first. And Cousins is tough to guard, but he misses that one. All right, good, good stuff happening right now. Forbes, heat check. Open. Bang. Limitless range. Catch and shoot. Let's go. Bryn Forbes with 11. One point game. All right, so they went on a little run. 7-0 run. And um, so now we got to feed Jaron Jackson, see what he can do. And it's going to be a green light every time. Kuzma, man, you cannot stop this man. He's got 14 points on 6 of 8 shooting. Hot start tonight, I'd say so. All right, Cousins really scares me. And... That's why right there. Three men on him. All right. Pushing it has really gave us some good results. And Karouche with the three-pointer brings us back within 10. I really feel like we've been fighting and clawing just to stay, you know, within single digits here. Uh, here in the second quarter. First quarter. Oh, my God. I saw that from a mile away. I saw that coming from a mile away. We got to do better with our switches. I, I think maybe I need to change some of our defensive settings up because guys are switching when I'm not expecting them to and stuff like that. Jaron Jackson again with the green release. He's an animal. All right, Beverly and Trey. Ooh, a little shake and bake from Beverly there. And oh my God. These are the things that we cannot let happen. We cannot let LeBron unleash chaos on us like that okay John Morant beautiful screen by Jaron Jackson I was gonna go for the dunk there but I saw Kuzma coming all right Josh Hart has been uh doing a little more work than I expected him to do he's got seven already Danny Green that was a very small window for him oh almost with the steal but look at this look at this man 20 points 10 rebounds already Keeping pace with LeBron James. Uh, not anymore, I guess. Okay. Josh Hart. No, not again. Come on, man. Josh Hart. All right, if Josh Hart gets us again, man, I'm going to... You got to be kidding me. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Man, with the assists and... Uh, we couldn't even get the steal there. That was close, though. Cousins with 18, 14 in the paint. We got to find a way to stop him, too. Morris, uh, not open. You know what? We're just going to take it with Jaron Jackson. When all else fails. Look look at this man. Look. Oh, my God. It's like stealing candy from a baby. All right, LeBron. This scares me, but we got the double team. Two good defenders on him, and Lopez with the block. All right. Push it, and bang. All day, wide open. Morant needed that one for his confidence. All right. Let's try to stop their fast break here. He gets it back over to Harvey. And this guy, I don't like him having the ball at all because he can get around everybody. And he does. And, oh, but he missed it. All right, good good news for us. We got lucky. Avery Bradley, let's see what you can do. Zubots to Leonard. Leonard's got a weird release. Okay. Man, if I can get that release down, he's going to be dangerous. 
All right. Late in the third here, it's not looking good. We're down by uh, 21. Let's go for the screen. Back to Leonard, he's not really open. Oh my God, but he still drains it on the pick and pop, man. He's got a, a very slow, weird release, but if I can get that thing down, man, he is gonna be very dangerous. Harvey's got it. The, oh, nice steal, Zubots. Let's get it up to Karooch. Bradley Cutton. Green light. Beautiful play. What, what a nice play in transition there. All right, we got to get Ja involved here somehow. Let's get a screen for him. Not a good one. Lonzo Ball is a really good defender. Somebody's got to be open here. Come on now. There, there we go. And the and one. Look at that. That is on you, Vonley. Get hype, Ja Morant. With that beautiful jersey on. And, okay. They're going to bring in DeMarcus Cousins and rain on my parade. All right. Early in the fourth here, we're down by 19. We got to try to get something going. Jaron Jackson was open, but I couldn't get it to him. But he's open again. You cannot give that man a wide open lane like that. He is going to stuff it every single time down your throat. All right. Let's see what we can do here. We're, we're probably not winning this, but you cannot leave that man wide open like that. I don't care how much you're up by. You got to put a body on him. All right, we got some of our bench guys in the game at this point. Jaron Jackson is still there, though, and he is still doing work. 26 points, 12 boards. Let's see if he can complete the three-point play, and he does. We got to get, get something to boost our confidence up and maybe get some momentum going in the next game. Jaron Jackson... Oh my goodness, man. He is just incredible. 29 points on the night, 13 rebounds. All right, man. Jaron Jackson has been our constant. I'm going to try to get some other guys involved here, though. Forbes was cutting. Ah, eh, we're just going to go to Jaron Jackson. <laughs> it's a, look, look at that. Look at that. That, that is just, that's too easy. We're just basically trying to pad the stats in garbage time here. This game is just about over. And what a spin move by Bradley with the mid-range. Man, he is just, he's the master of those crazy little moves. So as you can see, both teams pretty consistent as far as the first and second half splits go. Of course, they shot about 10% better than us. So a lot better of a percentage than, than we had throughout the game. But uh, what, okay. But when you're getting looks like that, it is not hard to shoot a, a, a high percentage. All right, time winding down here now. We're just going to try to uh, maybe put up one more shot here. They missed that one. We'll try to put one more up and see if we can't make it look better in the box score. Avery Bradley, and that's going to do it. So at the end of regulation, 130 to 109, we lose by 21 points. Uh, we had a pretty good first half. You know, things weren't that bad. We were able to keep it pretty close. But the Lakers had a pretty Warriors-esque third quarter where they just kind of pulled away and never looked back and made it really, really tough for us to make any kind of run in the fourth quarter to try to, to make any kind of comeback. But this team is, is, is quite a bit different than the team we faced last year. You know what I mean? Um, they got guys that have really developed and come a long way. They've got DeMarcus Cousins now. They've got DeRatio Harvey now. So they've got pieces that are making it a lot easier for them. And, uh, you know, they're having themselves a hell of a season too. Uh, so they expect to beat teams like us. So they're obviously going to be coming out with the mindset that they're expecting to win. So one last look at the Lakers destroying our hopes at a four-game winning streak. Uh, which would have been our longest of the season. Uh, Jaron Jackson had a really good game, though. 31, 13, 1, 1, 2 blocks. Morant with 17 points, 11 assists. And then on the Lakers' side, it was LeBron and DeMarcus Cousins. They were just, I mean, as you guys can see, they were just going at us all game long. There was really not a whole lot we could do about it inside. Uh, they scored something like 90 points in the paint, which was just absolutely insane. Right now, we're not the team that we want to be or that we expect to be in the future. So games like this against the Lakers, you know, they expect to beat us.
So I went in and checked, and we've actually got three different guys in the Rising Stars game. We've got Jaron Jackson Jr., John Morant, and Rodion's Karuch. So let's simulate it and see how we do. So it looks like the USA team beats the world team 128 to 99. Jaron Jackson leads the way in scoring with 20 points, 11 boards, 2 assists. So that's a, that is a really proud moment for us. John Morant, he uh, played 27 minutes. He had 6, six points, 3 rebounds, 8 assists. He had 2 steals. So, uh, you know, not a great game, but he didn't take a whole lot of shots. Of course, we had Karooch in this game coming off the bench. He scored nine, had seven boards. And then we had our hashtag ad player, Bo Bamba. He played 30 minutes, he scored nine points, had six rebounds, a steal, three blocks, only two turnovers. So a good game for him all the way around. So now we can move on past and simulate through the all-star break. And as you guys can see at the top there, your three point contest winner was James Harden. And then your slam dunk contest winner was Derek Jones Jr. who is now playing for the OKC Thunder. And then as you can see in the All-Star game, Team Giannis beat Team LeBron 132 to 129, so kind of a low scoring All-Star game. So we're gonna play two more games leading up to the end of the 2020 season here. The first one coming up is gonna be this March 26th away game against the Dallas Mavericks. They're a little bit more on our level, you know, right now as it stands there, 19 and 38, we're 17 and 43. Uh, so it's a game that we can, you know, hopefully at least keep competitive, maybe even win and get our confidence up. And then the last game that I want to play of the season is going to be this April 15th home game against the Indiana Pacers, the new look Indiana Pacers. I would really like to get a look at that team, uh, you know, see how they're doing. You know, we just traded Jetty Osman to them. So, uh, you know, that's a game that I want to play and, you know, at least see how competitive they really are, how good they really are. But first, we're going to simulate up to this March 26 Mavericks game right here. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to simulate all the way up to the game. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to look at the stats. I think that that might make things a little smoother and a little quicker. Uh, so let's do that right now. So the contract extension deadline is today. And uh, we're going to take a really quick look at our contract extensions. Uh, Bryn Forbes, ineligible right now. He's... I think the only guy on this list that I would really want to re-sign to a longer term deal. Honestly, I like Myers Leonard a lot. Let's see what he's expecting. Um, he's not expecting a whole lot of money, so we're going to do a 2 plus 1 flat um, with a team option and see how he feels about that. He accepted. Okay, good. So that's actually not bad. Uh, he was making a lot more money than that. So um, we get him for a couple million dollars a year. Uh, and that's a that's a bargain in my opinion DJ Augustine we will make a decision on that later because I'm not 100% sure whether we want to keep him around But we've got time in the offseason to make decisions like that. So for now we can focus on this regular season All right, so we've made it to the Mavericks game. We won two games along the way and uh, Check this out one of those two games was a seven-point win the first game that we simulated after the all-star break against the Golden State Warriors. Let's take a quick look and see what happened here. Curry put up 32. Klay Thompson put up 27. Morant with 35, 2, and 8. Jaron Jackson with 21, 6, and 4. When them two guys go off, we can even beat the Golden State Warriors. Check that out. And we'll quickly take a look at some of the stats from these other games. We lost by 3 to the Grizzlies. Morant put up 26. Keldon Johnson, 14. Then it was the Wizards beating us by 40. Jaron Jackson and John Morant, again, our leading scorers. The Wizards, Jarrett Culver, man, still doing his thing. 36-9-4 with three steals and two blocks. The Raptors beat us by 35, and it looks like Morant and Jackson again, each with over 20 points. Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Lowry did very, very well for the Raptors. And look at this. Our hashtag ad player, a Corey Tyler III with 18 points, two boards, four assists, so a good game for him. The Bucks beat us by 40. Eric Bledsoe put up 36 on us. Giannis with 24 and 18. Jaron Jackson and John Morant, once again, our leading scorers with 18 and 15, respectively. Then it was the Rockets beating us by 23. I'm sorry, 22. Ja putting up 19, 5 and 5 with four steals, so a very good game there. Suns beat us only by a point. Brooke Lopez came out as the leading scorer there. Devin Booker putting up 21. RJ Barrett, not really. Uh, too much of an impact in this one with 12 and 5. The rejuvenated Orlando Magic beat us by 25 points. Vucevic put up 37 and 18 on us, almost a triple double there. Jaron Jackson with 32, 9 and 1. Morant with 15, 6, 9 assists. Bucks beat us again by 10 points. Jaron Jackson with 34, 7 and 2. The Bucks' new addition, Buddy Heald, dropping 31 on us. Giannis with a 24 point triple double. 
Next up, the second win in this stretch of games would beat the Bullets by 17 points. Jaron Jackson and John Morant once again. What a duo. Zubots putting up 14 and 13. A nice double-double. Cam Reddish still looking like the guy in Vancouver as it stands. The Cavs beat us by 11 in this one. Larry Nance Jr. putting up 27. Had a double-double. Ja putting up 17 with 8 assists. Detroit beating us by 30. Blake Griffin with 32 in this one. Mike Conley with 25. That's a, that's a pretty deadly duo right there. And then John Morant with 20 points. He had three steals in this one. And then once again, Jaron Jackson just not really showing up in the last couple games there. And then that brings us right on into this March 26th game against the Dallas Mavericks, which we are going to play against Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, who are both healthy at the moment. So we'll get to take a look at the chemistry between those two guys. I'm actually kind of excited to see how they play together. Outside of those two superstars, this team really isn't all that deep. They don't really have much else other than those two guys. So it should be a pretty winnable game for us. Uh, it's definitely not going to be one of those games where we get punched in the mouth like we did against L.A. Um, but, you know, they could come out on top. I mean, Luka, he can, he can heat up real quick and he can stay hot for the entirety of the game. Uh, and if Chris Stapps has his legs under him, uh, you know, coming off the injury at this point, which he probably should, it's been enough time, uh, you know, they can they could do some damage, but uh, I'm confident that we match up well against Dallas. So before we close out this episode, I've got a few more hashtag ad players that I'm going to be adding in for the 2020 draft class, and those are as follows. Up first, we've got Mr. Jacob Beaver. Next up, Will Rogers. CJ Gonzalez. Damian Hagen. Goku Son. Sonny Cabo. Next up, Mr. Russell Lloyd. Then you got Nick Baker. Next up, Fishy Tuss. And then rounding things out, we've got the man that this video was dedicated to, submitted by Logan Perkins. This is Mr. Brian Perkins. He passed away of cancer when Logan was only two years old. So it is an honor to have the youthful Brian Perkins in our 2020 draft class here in the Badger series. Now, I've really been trying to keep up with the hashtag ad players, and I do want to let you guys know... If I've responded to you guys and told you guys that I would get you in for one of the upcoming draft classes here, uh, please let me know and comment on this video because I know that there's a few of them that I missed. I try to take screenshots of all of the hashtag ad players, especially the ones that I reply to and let you guys know that I'm getting you in there. So if I've replied to you and told you that you would be in and you weren't in this class, uh, I may be working on yours, but just in case, Make sure to comment on this video and copy and paste your hashtag ad player here. There's a few that I'm still working on. And for everyone else who has been submitting the hashtag ad players, I want to let you guys know that I really appreciate it so much. You will absolutely be in there in the future. We're going to have a lot of draft classes that I'm going to need to fill up because I will run out of real players in the very near future to add to these draft classes. So we'll have to fill them up with hashtag ad players. I am doing them in order of the date that they were posted. So if uh, if yours was one of the more recent ones, uh, you know, definitely just be patient. I promise you I'll get you in there very, very soon. So anyway, in the next episode, we are not only going to play the Dallas Mavericks, but we're also going to dive deeper in to scouting some of these players that are coming up in the 2020 draft class. Cannot wait to do that with you guys and get you guys' feedback. But I hope to see you guys around in the next episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>